Hello, my friends, and welcome back. <sighs> Today, we're going to be taking a look at some clips from fat activists being outraged at the movie The Whale. The movie hasn't even come out yet, and they're already angry. Just reading the synopsis from the movie was enough to send them over the freaking edge. This might have to go in the series, Things That Thin People Do That Piss Off Fat People. Is the movie The Whale fat phobic? There's only one way to find out, and that's by listening to other people complain about stuff. In order to give this the super serious attention that it needs, we must first apply comb to mustache. It took me 10 years to make this movie. A lot of people are really excited about Brendan Fraser's new movie, The Whale. And I mean, I was as well until I read the plot of the movie. Um, 600 pound man who eats himself to death? That's not good. Bruh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, it is not good to be 600 pounds and eat yourself to death. I agree. But I love the way she's like, that is not good. <laughs> I don't know why that's cracking me up so much, man. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I said it once and I'll say it again. There's no reason why in 2022 anybody should be in a fat suit. Dude, there is no reason why anybody in 2022 should be wearing a fat suit. Last year, hell yeah, and also next year, fuck yeah, go for it. But this particular year? Mm, nah, dog, this ain't the year for that. Dude, I really can't believe we're doing X or Y in insert current year here. It's crazy. It's really crazy. It is especially disappointing to see a fat man in a fat suit. He wasn't fat enough. <laughs> like, he, he's like, all right, I gained 100 pounds for the roll. And they're like, mm, no, you're going to have to put on another five. He's like, what? I can't do that, man. I'm half dead already. This article for The Guardian, for all this is him in the fat suit. This is the description of him. Charlie is morbidly obese, a giant pool of Jabba the Hutt type flesh. Bruh. <laughs> Why did they write it like that? You know what, dude? Don't be mad at the rest of us for the way that they worded this, okay? We didn't write this. I didn't write that, all right? Don't come at me, man. I wouldn't call anybody Jabba the Hutt type flesh. This is crazy. Whoever wrote this movie review, honestly, it is a little much. I'm going to have to agree with you there, dude. What the hell? This is vile. <laughs> it is honestly kind of disturbing. They didn't need to word it like that. I'm going to have to agree with her on this one point. Everything else I disagree with, but this one point, yeah, y'all didn't need to say it like that, dude. This description of fatness is vile, violently fat phobic. Okay, let's not say anything is violently fat phobic now. Now you're, the words that you're choosing to use are ridiculous. Hardly able to leave the couch with a walking frame to get to the lavatory, gorging delivery pizzas and fried chicken with a stash of chocolate bars in the desk drawer. Okay, whoever wrote this description or whatever is violently fat phobic. <laughs> I'm gonna have to agree for once. Oh my god. And I'm seeing everyone celebrate Brendan Fraser and like, I really wanted to too. But this film is going to cause so much damage. I don't know about that. It's just a stupid movie. If a movie is going to damage you, you should probably stop watching them, honestly. Um, if your emotions are that easily swayed in one way or the other, and like watching the, the flickering picture box makes you feel all kinds of emotions and stuff, you should stop watching it. The answer isn't representation in media and this and that. The answer is to stop consuming media. Stop watching these stupid movies. Stop paying attention to social media and all these dumb movements that keep coming out. Go live your life. Disconnect from all of this nonsense. It is an inherently fat phobic film. All right, the description is a little wacky. Uh, I'm not mad at Brendan Fraser for that. He didn't write that. And I'm really disappointed that something like this was made in 2022. I'm also disappointed. This would have been great back in 2021. We loved that kind of stuff back then. But today, mm. All right, so I agree with her on the point that uh, the way that they wrote that description it was a little much, bro. <laughs> They're all like, is Jabba the Hutt type flesh cascading off of his grotesque physique? And you're like, oh my god, what the hell? But the answer is not to change the film or change the way that anything is done. The answer is for you to disconnect from this stuff. Stop watching it. Stop watching TV and media and social media and all this nonsense in general. You see, the media used to make you feel bad because you weren't thin enough. One day they're going to make you feel bad because you're not fat enough. So stop listening to them. Next clip. 
With all this discussion of the whale, I've been seeing a lot of people lacking true understanding of why fat suits are inherently harmful and fat phobic. I don't know if I would say they're harmful and fat phobic. I'd say it would be more harmful to gain 600 pounds just for a roll than it is to put on a fat suit, wouldn't you? The fat suit you can take off at the end of the day and go live your life normally. Let's get into it. The usage of fat suits reinforce the societally held belief that fatness is not a natural state. Mm -hmm. And your argument is that it is a natural state. You could be this size out in nature surviving off of what you foraged, hunted, and grew, right? It reinforces this idea that fatness is something that everyone can just take off. If you worked hard and- What? What are you talking about? That's not what a fat suit means. So when you put on the fat suit, and then you just take it off when you're done filming, you're implying that it's something that you could just be removed and it's not a natural state of being and Barbara did dirt. What? It's not saying any of that. What are you talking about? Are you saying that you get mad when you see an actor take their fat suit off? You're like, it's not that easy to lose weight. Trust me. <laughs> is that is that what this is? I'm on. I'm very confused. Enough. There's a thin person inside of every fat person. What? That's what you got from people wearing a fat suit? This is a metaphor for the idea that inside every fat person there is a thin person waiting to get out? Bruh, you did a lot of connecting dots there that shouldn't have been connected. So, uh, a thin actor wearing a fat suit is symbolic of the idea that inside every fat person is a thin person waiting to get out. You should be a writer. You have quite the imagination. You can really connect dots and all this kind of stuff. It's very interesting. This is emphasized with the unnatural look of most fat suits. They're not trying to look unnatural. They're trying to look as natural as they can. The technology just isn't there yet. Along with that, most actors who are wearing fat suits have never actually been the size that they're representing. You're taking a lot of strange takes in this. You're like, fat suits look unnatural on a person because they're trying to tell you that it is unnatural to be fat. That is very bizarre. Okay, well, I have a question for you. How would you make a fat suit? What material would you use and how would you make it look accurate or realistic or whatever? Have you ever seen them make a fake muscle suit? It also looks completely ridiculous and fake. Because it's hard. It's hard to do, man. How can you just attach some stuff to me that looks accurately like somebody that is morbidly obese, man? What you're seeing is the limitations of the technology, okay? Just because they can make realistic looking dinosaurs back in the 2000s or whenever the hell Jurassic Park came out <laughs> doesn't mean that in 2022 we can make a realistic looking fat suit. The technology just ain't there, man. We are so behind. You know the government is hiding that technology from us, right? They have the technology for realistic looking fat suits. They're just holding it from us, dude. And therefore, in the fat suit, the way that they move, the way that they express, the way that they sit, these things look unnatural. Well, I don't know what looks natural or not. I've seen Nick Akato moving around and he jiggles a lot and does all this crazy stuff. So he proves that um, fat bodies can move in all kinds of interesting ways. You guys never jiggle like he does. Because they are for that person. A thin person wearing a fat suit is never going to look natural because that is not that person's natural state. I'm guessing if they could find morbidly obese people that were good actors, they would cast them for the role. Do you know how many hours a day they do filming and stuff when they shoot a big movie like that, dude? We're talking like 10, 12 hour, 14 hour work days, okay? I'm not trying to say that somebody who's 600 pounds is, you know, not necessarily the most physically agile person like Tammy Slayton, but I am saying that I think this is a very controversial opinion, I'm sure, but I have the feeling that somebody who is 600 pounds could not be on their feet walking around and moving and filming all these different scenes for like 12 to 14 hours a day. Maybe I'm way off here. Next clip. Let's talk about the whale. I have received a multitude of requests to talk about the whale in the past few days. And you have come to the right person because I have read the play twice. Now for anybody who doesn't know, The Whale is a new movie coming out directed by Darren Aronofsky. It's based on a play by Samuel Hunter about a very fat man who is dying of being fat. Okay, so who are we mad at? We're mad at the guy who wrote the play, right? Not the guy who turned it into a movie. And we're also not mad at Brendan Fraser for playing the role, right? And the whale refers to both the metaphor of like Moby Dick, which he's like teaching an online English class, and also just, just him, because fat, fat animal, big fat animal. 
I love how TikTok is such a piece of garbage that like your words aren't even synced up with the audio on this. This isn't my computer. My computer is top of the line, baby. This is TikTok. I'm gonna try to be chill when I talk about this because I really do respect Sam Hunter as a playwright and I do actually respect everybody involved. I think that Right. This person is an actress, so she's going to go ahead and try to cover herself right now and say that I respect everybody involved in this production because I want to still have work tomorrow. However, here's everything that's wrong with it. I love those Hollywood actor like fake artist types that do the jazz hands and the spirit fingers and stuff. So you dislike the movie, but you don't want to burn any bridges because you're an actor in Hollywood. So you're going to be like, I really respect the guy that made the play and also the guy that made the movie and everybody involved with every Hollywood aspect of this thing. However, it's violently fat phobic and it's garbage. <laughs> Make up your mind, man. It's a matter of insensitivity and unawareness of how harmful that this kind of thing is. Harmful to who? If moving images and sounds on a screen are harming you, um, you should stop watching the screen. Maybe go outside, get some fresh air, you know? That said, this is an incredibly, incredibly harmful narrative about fat people, and especially super fat people. people well, like I said before, you know, if, if uh, moving pictures and sounds coming off of that shiny picture box are like hurting you inside, stop watching it. It's very, very simple. People who are like, 600 pounds as Charlie in the story is. To give you guys some context about the plot. So in the, in the film, they're saying that to get to 600 pounds, you would have to eat a lot and not move around that much. And that's just not accurate. Tammy Slayton's been doing jumping jacks for years. It's just not working. The genetics you see. The whale begins with the lead character of Charlie, this 600 pound man, um, almost having a heart attack while masturbating to gay porn. Well, you know, we've all been there, so this movie's very relatable so far. <laughs> and the gay porn part is relevant because basically it comes out in the story that, spoiler, he's gained all this weight because he's basically emotionally ate since his lover died and there's like some internalized homophobia and stuff going on. How is it internalized homophobia if he's eating a lot because his gay lover died? The word internalized is really not being used in the correct way anymore. He's, he's homophobic even though he's gay? What? What are you talking about? Dude, y'all need to stop. The plot of the whale revolves around Charlie trying to reconnect with his teenage daughter who is incredibly dismissive of him and incredibly fat phobic towards him. In fact, pretty much everyone in his life is incredibly like, you're killing yourself. And they shouldn't try to stop him from harming himself. They should just support him. He is. And he basically is on purpose. It's very clear that his eating and his being fat and his choosing to stay fat is a form of self-harm. So in your mind, if you're experiencing mobility issues and you continue to eat, this is not some sort of problem. This is just fine. This is not the same as any other addiction. This is a whole different thing. This is just fine. And what happens in the last scene of the play? He dies from walking across the room. Well, at least he didn't die just laying in his bed. And in the process of doing so, he has this final reconnection with his... Oh my gosh, the shapeshifters. She's shapeshifting? I knew there was something more nefarious to this whole fat acceptance thing. All right, Zylon, I bow to you. Fine. We will push forward with the fat acceptance movement, Zylon. Daughter. The really unfortunate thing is, it's actually a very powerful story about father-daughter relationships, but at the expense of fat people. Well, you would think that if he wanted to be there for his daughter, he would take better care of himself, you know? You see, when you have kids, you have a duty to those kids to take care of yourself now so that you can be there to take care of them. We all know that morbid obesity doesn't harm you or shorten your lifespan at all. The average lifespan is supposed to be like 42, right? You had a good run if you made it to 42, right? And because this is such a sad and tragic and also well-written story, and you have this transformation thing of Brendan Fraser putting on the fat suit to play a 600-pound man, this is Oscar bait. And you're going to be hearing a lot about it in the next few months. I literally want to cry every time I talk about this. Because the stereotypes that this portrays are that fat people hate ourselves. That our fatness is a result of us, one, eating too much, and two, not knowing how to cope with our emotional issues, and that we are going to die any second. And the whale does something different than most portrayals of people Charlie's size, in that it evokes pity, first and foremost. And that is what is so dangerous about it, and so dangerous about the responses I've seen to it so far. It's dangerous because of the way people are reacting to it. Because when you pity a fat person, you're convinced that you're feeling empathy, and that that makes you a good person and an ally. But no, when you see somebody who is miserable, uh, the human condition is to feel bad for them. 
It's funny how much you're projecting and how much you care about what everybody else thinks about you and the body type that you happen to be in. You're saying this movie is problematic because it's going to give people all these ideas about what fat people are. Who cares what people think? Why are you so worried about how people perceive you? If you were a true, free human being, you wouldn't give a damn. Like when religious people come and start trying to convince you of their religion, that tells you a couple of things. First, it tells you that they don't even really believe it. They need you to believe it in order for them to feel validated. When you truly believe something, you don't give a damn if anybody else believes it. I have my truth, and I don't care if any of you see it or not. If you have to try to convince me of all the stuff that you believe and make me believe it too, it's because you don't really believe it. Pity also distances people from fatness and makes them extra grateful they're not one of us. You see how out of sync that was? TikTok is such a resource-heavy piece of garbage that just recording a simple video of your face talking into it, it, there's all this lag between your mouth moving and the audio. The screenplay will be adapted from playwright Samuel D. Hunter's The Whale. When the play debuted off-Broadway in 2012, it received high praise from critics and won the Drama Desk Award, as well as the Lucille Lortel Award for Outstanding Play. It got the Lucille Lortel Award? Oh my goodness! This is some serious shit! I totally know what that is. The story follows a 600-pound reclusive English teacher, Charlie, who has decided to eat himself to death. What the hell? <laughs> he decided that? Charlie's pain and misery comes from the abandonment and death of his gay lover, which leads to his chronic binge eating. Whoa, 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 man. Are you saying that binge eating leads to weight gain? This is just not true. Calories don't lead to weight gain. That's the most fat-phobic rubbish rhetoric that I've ever heard, and it's rooted in all sorts of things. It's rooted in this, it's based in that, my goodness. At the same time, Charlie tries to reconnect with his 17-year-old daughter for one last chance at redemption. So, I love how efficient the fat acceptance activists are. This movie hasn't even come out yet, and they're already outraged. I read the synopsis and I was boiling. <laughs> I can't wait till this movie comes out so I can watch it and see if it really is fat phobic as they say. I don't see anything inherently fat phobic about wearing a fat suit, honestly. So you guys seem to be triggered by people wearing fat suits, but not triggered by people taking performance enhancing drugs to get the physique necessary to be a Marvel comic book hero in a movie. I would say that that's far more harmful because people think that they can attain this crazy physique just from buying your diet and exercise plan, but you're actually on gear, and that's a huge hustle in the fitness industry that I will talk about in a future video. All these dudes are on gear, and they're all like, if you want to look like me, just buy this diet and exercise program. It's like, dog, you put on 10 pounds of muscle in two weeks. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, homie. Anyway, that about does it. Thanks for watching, commenting, liking, and subscribing and I'll see you in the next one.